spiral ropes are so cool. You can do so many things with them. You can make them really small and streamlined and very um, precise, or you can make them really loopy and and lush and and very dramatic. Uh, so I think that spiral ropes are one of the great underserved bead needing. Uh, tools that you can use. Uh, I had just done a book on spiral uh, on ropes and spiral ropes was actually the first section in that book because I think that most ropes grow from the very basic spiral rope. So that's what we're going to look at today and I wanted to show you some variations of spiral rope. What we're going to talk about is the very basic spiral rope but um, I, do, I wanted to show you what you'll be able to do with the concept. So let's take a look. This is one a bracelet that I created using freshwater pearls. This is one that I, I kind of used larger loops on so that it's a little more full and fluffy and dramatic. Uh, this is a version of the piece that I'm actually wearing today. And this is a small spiral rope that I've done with three millimeter crystals and a small center section. And what I did with it is I made it a very long necklace so that I can either wear it uh, long just by itself. I tend to knot it uh, because I like that look a lot. Uh, and then I actually made it long enough that I can double it over and wear it as a double necklace too. But I will also show you uh, in this piece how we're going to take those, bring those ends together uh, instead of adding a clasp, how you would just join those two pieces together. That's going to be a part of this, this piece, uh, this video that we're doing. You do not have to do spiral rope for your entire necklace. You can just do a section of spiral rope and it looks great. And then this is actually a piece that was in my book and uh, it's where I varied the spiral rope. I took it from a narrow to a more thick piece. I embedded some um, focal beads here and then added one little section down at the bottom and all of this is just variations on spiral rope. So that's what we're going to learn how to do right now. All spiral ropes start out the same way and what you need are some larger size beads for what I call the spine. And in this case, I'm just going to pick up four beads. These are size eights that I'm working with here. Uh, other beads that I like to use for the spine are delicas because delicas have very large holes. Uh, you do end up going through these beads a whole bunch of times and that's why your hole size is uh, a factor in a spiral rope. So that's going to be the spine that goes straight down the center. You're only going to see this peeking out a little bit. Then you have to pick up your beads for your loop. In this case, what I've got sitting here are some size 11 seed beads. I've got a crystal because I thought I'd go ahead and add a little accent in this loop. So what I'm picking up are three size 11s, a crystal, and three size 11s. Now there's no magic to this particular set of beads. You can pick up anything you want for a loop. You could pick up all seed beads. You could pick up two seed beads, a crystal, and two seed beads. There's just no magic to it. What you're going to do is come from the bottom end and go back up through all four of those spine beads. And this is going to be the first time you're going to get a chance to take a look at what that loop is going to look like here. And so if that's not full enough for you or if you wanted it closer to the, um, the spine, this would be your point to make that adjustment. So now, this, that's, that's just for your first piece that you picked up the four uh, size eight seed beads. For your next and all your, for your next loop and all the others, you'll only pick up one spine bead because we're going to grow this down the center by one spine bead every time. So one spine bead and then the beads for the loop again. So three elevens in this case, a crystal and three elevens. You'll have to bring that new spine bead down so that it's sitting right next to all the other spine beads. And you're only going to pass through the top four beads. So because you're adding a bead, it's going to be that new one that you've just added and the three below it. So you'll always be dropping one off the bottom and using your brand new one when you add that loop. Here's the other thing. You don't want your loops to, some of them to end up on this side and some of them to end up on this side. What you want to do is every time you add a loop, 
push it off to the same side. Because I'm a right-handed person, I tend to push them off to the right. If you're a lefty and you push them off to the left and that feels more comfortable to you, that's fine. Just pick a side and go with it and stay with it for the rest of your life. So we'll keep adding. So another spine bead, three loop beads, a crystal, and three loops. Bring it down to the remainder, and I'm only passing through the first four, or the top four of your spine beads. And you're just gonna keep adding and keep adding this way and add loops and grow it as long as you want it to. And that is basically how you're gonna do a spiral rope. If you want to uh, work on it for a little bit, then come back and we'll talk about how you're going to add an end thread because you will need to do that. So once you get going with your spiral rope, you're going to find out that spiral rope takes an awful lot of thread. It's because you're going and doing these loops and going through that center spine so many times. So you're definitely going to have to add thread and end thread. And there is a little bit of a trick to that, um, at least to make it so that your center spine beads have... Uh, you're not, you don't want to tie knots in those center spine beads because you need to be able to get your thread up through there again. So here's how we're going to do it. Let's take a look. I have got here uh, a very short little thread left. This is about as short as you want to go when you go when you need to, to finish off um, a thread. Now the nice thing about spiral rope is that you don't have to play the game of, well, where does my thread need to be coming out? Uh, when I start the new one? The answer is it's just going to be coming out the top of that s spine bead. So you don't have to add your new one first and then end your old one off. You can actually go ahead and end this right off the bat. So what I like to do instead of uh, just going, s the easiest way to do this would be good to go straight down the spine, tie a couple of knots right there in that spine area, and then cut it off. But, like I said, I need to be able to get back through those spine beads a bunch of times. And I have uh, messed myself up more times than I care to admit by doing that and then having trouble getting that needle through. So what we're going to do instead is tie knots in these outside loops. And you can actually just pass through the very first loop that's right there. It's going to be the last one that you did. And I bring, I, I don't like to tie knots next, next to crystals ever because crystals are nasty little thread cutters. And so uh, that's a bad spot to have a, a knot. But what you can do is here at the base of this loop, I'm just going to catch the thread that's sitting right there and tie my knot there. Pop it through, make sure that it all tightens right down there. Now I can go up a couple of beads. I only go up one or two. And then I'm going to find the loop that's coming out of that bead that I'm coming out, that center spine bead that I'm coming out of. So here's the loop that's coming out of that. And then I'm going to pass through that loop. Like so. And get to the bottom of that loop. I'll tie another knot right there. And then at this point, I can just, because I'm done tying knots, I can just pass down through a couple of those spine beads, tighten it on up, and now I can cut that thread off. Okay. So to add thread, the only thing that's a little bit different about adding thread is that you do want to make sure that you are end up coming out that center spine bead. And so what you need to do is make sure that when you start it down here, and let's say I'm going to just randomly pick a spot, I'm going to go up a couple beads, there we go. I have to kind of hold on to that tail thread to start out with. There's the spot, the loop that's coming out of this guy. So I'm going to pass through that. So all of this is familiar. Kind of manipulate it to get down to that loop. There we go. Through 
those last through beads of the loop. And catch the thread. You know, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of loops and thread and all sorts of stuff going on here. And the thing that I see people do most to themselves when they're adding an ending thread that gets them into trouble is not taking their time. And if you're trying to rush this uh, because you don't like it or whatever, um, that's what's going to get you in trouble. So as long as you take your time, stop, get the threads, you know, like that little tail thread, get it out of the way so it's not going to accidentally get pulled in there. Go ahead and take the time to pry these loops apart so that you can see that center spine. Then you're going to have a much better uh, experience with adding an ending thread. So we're going to pretend that I went through more than one loop here just so that I can get you to the point that I need to show you, which is when you go to add, do your, your last loop, what you want to do is you want to tie your last knot right on the loop before the last one because it, you, what you want to be able to do is come through this loop and then come back through all four of these seed beads come out the top of the spine bead and then you'll be ready to go again so you just that you just want to be very aware that you want to be coming through this center spine bead straight you don't want to come up this loop and then try to because if you came out this last loop, out the top of this last loop, I've seen people do this, and then start adding their spine bead there, um, well, right there, you're not, it's not going to be centered. And so you're going to actually have a little jog in your, in your uh, piece. So that's how you're going to do your adding and ending a thread. And then when we come back, the other really important thing to know is how to attach a clasp. And I'm going to give you two different ways to do a clasp, either add, adding a clasp, a, a pre-made clasp, or how you can join the two ends together to create one continuous rope. Okay, so let's get a clasp added to this. I tend to use toggle clasps. Uh, you can also use, uh, you know, the little fish hook ones or um, really any kind of clasp can be attached to a spiral rope. And it's really easy, so let me show you what's going on here. With your, be your thread coming out, that very last bead on the end, all I'm gonna do is pick up a loop of seed beads and I'm using the size 11 seed beads here you could you could choose to use the size 15s if you wanted doesn't really make a huge difference I just happen to be picking up six I'm gonna kinda see how that works out this clasp that I picked um, is gonna be absolutely perfect for it and in this particular t clasp the loop is on the back uh, oftentimes you'll see the loop on the side, but in this case it actually has a kind of a hidden loop. So we're just going to take your needle and thread through there, and then you'll have to go back down the center spine. And this is where you're going to want to go down farther than just four because uh, you don't want to come out that top loop again. Remember, you want to come out this, the seed bead because we're going to have to reinforce this piece. Uh, my rule of thumb on a clasp is that I want at least three passes of thread through there. So what we just did when we added it was the first pass. So now we're going to have to do two more passes. So to turn around and come back up here, we're going to utilize these loops. So my thread's coming out right here. The loop attached to it is right next to it. And so we're going to come up that loop. Now I can pop up those last two spine beads, reinforce that little loop of beads around the clasp, and all I'm doing here is passing through the beads, not adding anything. And then I would do the whole, that whole same thing again. And ideally, you're going to do it in a slightly different spot. I like to do it uh, in a different spot every time. Right now, whoops, just gave myself a little poke, a little DNA sample for my piece. That's it. You called your DNA signature. 
when you do that on your beaded piece. Uh, ideally, I try to do it in a different spot every time. And the other thing is, as I was coming back through the spine beads, I was noticing, and the reason that I poked myself is because I'm starting to get a lot of resistance there. So just be prepared that that could help happen. I happen to be using a size 10 needle, and I certainly could go down to a size 12 needle, and that would make a big, huge difference in, uh, in getting my needle up back through there. So then to navigate back up, I need to find, oops, okay, so here my thread's coming out here. Here's the loop that comes out of there, but that's gonna be that very last one that comes off the tip. So really, I need to go at least one more spine bead down. Now, when I turn around and come through this loop, back up here. Now I have one spine bead right there in the center to go through so that I'm coming out the center like so. Watching carefully for hooking on anything because that's something that's very very easy to do. So then I would just reinforce this again and then bring it back down and end your thread off the way you normally would. Okay, so that's your number one option for attaching a clasp. Now, your second option for a clasp is to not use a clasp at all. And if you're making a long piece that can fit over your head, what you can do is actually join the two ends together and just create one continuous uh, circle. It's not quite as easy as it sounds in that what people's um, reactions are is, okay, all I have to do is, here my thread's coming out of the spine bead here, I'm gonna go in the spine bead on the other side, go back and forth, reinforce a couple of times, and I'm done. Technically, you could do that, but what's gonna happen is you're actually gonna be missing two loops of these crystals if you do it that way. So there's actually two loops that you have to add when you're joining. And, the, and, I, and I say two loops, that's two loops only because my spine on this particular piece was only three delicas. And uh, so one of those will already have a loop attached to them, but the other two we have to attach loops to. If say you had five delicas on your spine, then you'd have four loops that you had to add. Okay, so I'm coming out of the center delica here. And what I'm gonna do is on the opposite edge, I'm gonna go through the center delica there. And just one, I'm just gonna attach it with one. Then I wanna line it up so that, you wanna make sure that your previous loops are off to the side here. So right here, you can see where my previous loop from, behind, from underneath was right under there. And now I'm coming out one uh, spine bead above where that previous loop was. So here I'm gonna add a loop. So in this case, my loop happens to be a size 15, a crystal and a size 15. And so now I'm just gonna add these as if it were normal. And as if I had picked up that spine bead instead of just grabbing it from the other end. And again, this time I'm only going through three because that was the spine on this particular piece. So now I've got that one, and then I need to pick up one more spine bead. So I'll go forward by one, and this will be my very last loop that I have to add. So one 15 and a crystal and a 15. And then I'm just going through the last three spine beads like I normally would. So this has a double benefit. It finishes off your, your loop pattern, but it also just reinforced that join area. And now you cannot tell at all where that join happened. And at this point, then I could just end off this thread. And then this is one continuous piece. Now this particular piece happens to be too short to go over my head, so I will actually undo this and make it longer and, and then do it again. But that is how you create um, a single continuous loop.
and that's also a really good thing to know how to do, especially these days when uh, the designs tend to be for longer necklaces. So I hope you had a really good time making spiral roll ropes, and I hope you experiment a lot. And that's what I'm really hoping to uh, encourage you to do is, is play with your loop size, uh, play with colors, play with placement, and then please be sure to, to share with me what you've done. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, there's a link, and you can find me here. Obviously, you can leave comments here. Uh, you can like this video and subscribe. There's buttons for that. I know, I got buttons for everything, right? And uh, I really hope that you have a really good time with it. Thanks so much.